It's here at last, the consolidated B24 Liberator from FX in one seventy second scale. Let's see what you get inside the kit for your money right here on Gary's Stuff. Hi there, I'm Gary. Welcome to the channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. In day today, I'm looking at the brand new consolidated B24 Liberator in one seventy second scale from airfix now if you like the show and i hope you do please do remember give it the old imperial thumbs up on the like button below it doesn't cost you anything and every like counts something else that won't cost of course is to make sure you subscribe to the channel hit that bell and you'll be notified of all my future content as it is published and if you do want to make a concrete contribution to the channel you can do that through one of my many affiliate programs Inf information on all of these is in the box below one of these is the FX Affiliate Program. Now, if you go to the link in the information box below, click on that, go to the FX Online Store and buy anything there, then at no extra cost to you, FX will make a donation to the running of this channel. You can still collect hobby reward points. You can still get your 10% FX Club discount if you are a member. So, let's make a start and have a look at what you get inside the box. Of the consolidated B24 Liberator in one seventy second scale from Airfix. So the box of the Liberator, the brand new Liberator from Airfix. Here's the front box art as usual. Adam Tooby's wonderful work. This is uh, from the lead scheme of the kit, obviously. And as it says here, consolidated B24H Liberator, one seventy second scale. And the product code here is A09010, which means it's a Series 9 kit. On this long side, our usual collection of warnings in many languages. A lot of codes that very few people really understand what they mean. Obviously, that means it should be done by people eight years and older. Mind you, if you can make this when you're eight, <laughs> fair play to you. Uh, this means you shouldn't let this anywhere near infants at all and a lot of the products are recyclable as well and here of course it says cartograph for the decals which is excellent on the other long side and i always get it the wrong way up there we go are the two schemes of the kit here let's see if i can get away with no shine on it there you go so an aircraft of the 733rd bomb squadron 453rd group 8th Air Force and an aircraft of the 831st Bomber Squadron of 485th Bomb Group of the 15th Air Force in Italy. Um, very similar, but obviously the uh, art around there and the decals are different, but you know, overall it's just green and grey. You know, what can I say? Here is a quick sort of resume of the aircraft itself, its history, da da. Here it says the length when complete 298 millimeters. That's pretty much 30 centimeters. That's kind of a foot long. 465 millimeters wide. That's like almost a foot and a half wide. And 278 pieces. You may not need all of the pieces depending on the fit of the aircraft. Like whether you're going to use the bombs, whether you've got undercarriage up or down, so on and so forth. But there are 278 pieces in the kit. Here there are um, call-outs for the uh, two schemes. Most of them are the same. The last one, B, has got 25. I'm going to guess that's yellow or something because it's got yellow on the tail. I don't know if they do that with a decal. We'll find out. All these, of course, are humble numbers. You can very easily convert these into other brands should you wish to do so. The kit comes with a token for three flying hours and it's skill level three. Now, this uh, token for flying hours... You can collect those if you're a member of the FX Club towards a free kit in the future. If you're not in the FX Club or you are and you don't want to collect the flying hours, please do give some thought to sending those to Models for Heroes. They can convert them into kits that truly, truly help members of our armed forces and members of our emergency services who are dealing with mental health issues as a result of their service get on the road to recovery. A link to this very excellent charity is in the information box below okay that's essentially the box let's have a look and see what we get inside 
As normal with these bigger FX kits, it's a straight lift off the top box. And inside we have plastic bags. I, I did ask FX, uh, on the 124 Spitfire, the larger parts have got sheets of uh, paper between them rather than plastic to protect them. And I said, why don't you do that for all the frames? He said, well, the thing is, um, a lot of the frames, if they've got small bits and they fall off, they rattle around in the base, you know, you might lose them. Whereas with this way, if they do come off the frame for any reason in the shipping and packing and shipping, then at least they're in the bag. So there we go. Um, you can, of course, recycle soft plastics at a lot of supermarket sites these days, in the UK at least. So there's one big one there. There's another big one here and a third one here, indeed, which has got a piece that's fallen off of the frame. So that kind of illustrates the point. Um, inside this box as well, there are bags, sorry, there are a couple of uh, bags for the transparent parts which are also separately protected. There is of course a large instruction leaflet and within the instruction leaflet are the decal sheets and there are the decal placing sheets and uh, I, I would have thought this being an American aircraft there's probably a load of um, a, a lot of bits that you have to match in, maybe there's not that many, there seem, don't seem to be as many uh, what they call them stencils as there are on other aircraft, and the instruction sheet itself. Let's have a look at all these different bits in a bit more detail. Well here we have frame A, this is largely the cockpit area, uh, these are parts of the wings, the interior of the wings, the flaps, ailerons, and the uh, one of the uh, we call these things spars. That's what we call them spars, one of the main spars. So, and there's the other main spars here on this part here. So, sort of set interior structural stuff, really. Frame B has the bombs, it has bomb racks, so on and so forth. Some of the interior of the cockpit, seats, radio sets, uh, gunners' positions, and so on and so forth. Frame C has the fuselage, tail, and various fins. Um, there's more than one option of fin, obviously, because these come in halves. There's two types of fin on this aircraft. Frame D contains, obviously, the upper and lower surfaces of the port wing, engine nacelles, engines, propellers for everything on here. Then frame E has the starboard wing, the supercharger and ducts for all the engines, bomb bay doors, all the wheels and undercarriage elements here. Frame F, we have some guns and we have the nose and you'll see the nose is a separate item to the rest of the fuselage. Obviously, one of the big things about Liberators was the way the nose is changed over the various models. So there's going to be plenty more models of the liberators come uh, other bits and pieces that are peculiar to the h i suspect are in this particular frame the first of the transparent frames is frame x this has all the side windows canopy uh, one of the uh, gun covers astrodome and stuff like that all the navigation lights the other transparent frame is frame Z. This has a presumably a different canopy, um, nose, ball turrets, uh, other gun turrets as well. We'll come back to these these bits here, which are very strange. Um, I'm guessing that this frame, there's going to be a frame Y, which will have a, another version of the Liberator, for the, all the sort of specific glass for that. But this is for frame Z for the B24H. I have a nice close look at the plastic. A um, couple of wave lines in there from the heat. The plastic's not being the same when they met in the mould, but that's not a major issue. That will not be seen. The moulding's very sharp, very crisp. Remember, this is the first 
run of, of this kit so this this should all be absolutely spotless frankly it's it's absolutely brand new so there shouldn't be any issues in the molding here rivets look nice and clean not too prominent the panel lines yeah as they're fixed do them at 172nd they're a little well they're very out of scale obviously of course they are um they're going to be but yeah maybe a little heavy but generally but once once you've built a kit and you do a bit of panel line washing on them, it actually seems to be better. I always find a lot of a lot of companies do that. Riveting around the window, so it looks really nice. I guess that's extra armor or something there. Um, yeah, it all looks very clean, all very straightforward. Um, I like the fact that the um, upper wing sits into this recess. That's uh, going to give it a nice clean edge. That, that implies that that join there is going to look absolutely clean. Um, the one underneath should follow that because that should be the limiting factor there is where the bottom edge sits if the bottom edge sits flush and top edge is very slightly oversized then that's going to look absolutely spot on as well which is good um, yeah all helps the kit look decent but yeah the mouldings look very nice actually crisp and clean as they should be on something that's brand new on the inside as well, I wait for the focus to pick out. There we go. On the inside as well, the mouldings are all there. Um, it's going to be an interesting piece of modelling to get all of this done. Notice they've got some. They've actually part of the tool actually takes off the burrs off this edge of these in, in, um, ejector pin marks. The sort of deburrers that go and do that for you. On the tooling i believe which is pretty cool the yeah structure looks fine all looks very nice all very nicely raised that's you know can take the detail if you want to because if you know if you're going to have like these windows open you're going to see a lot of this detail if you're not going to have those windows open of course you can take a position on how much of this detail you want to bring out that's that's up to you as a as a model maker um looking at these fins i mentioned there are like eight parts of fins in this kit the difference is uh, the size of the trim tab here so you can see the size of the trim tab there and compare that with a much bigger trim tab gap for the trim tab there in fact you can see the trim tab itself there just there that thing there's a trim tab rudder trim tab and this one's got a much smaller rudder trim tab so that's the difference i guess between either these two aircraft or through for um, forthcoming kits in the future look at some of the smaller bits like these storage lockers here these you know, radio panels or whatever these are on the side here yep. okay they're all right it's a radio set major main radio set i'm guessing they look okay um they're not the sharpest moldings but then do you know fix never are these days um, I think they go for buildability by an average person rather than sort of catering to very, very advanced or reasonably advanced model makers even. So the level of detail compared with some kits is not going to be high, but you know, even so you've got the cooling nozzles on, uh, cooling holes on, on these barrels here. Yeah? I guess these are 50 caliber guns, I'm guessing. Um, as I said, the detail is not the sharpest and crispest in the world. I don't think the plastic will take it. But they're very functional and reasonable for their target audience, I think. And, of course, there's going to be so much aftermarket for this in the very near future. A lot of this, if you're really not happy with a lot of this, then, then just hang on a little while and you'll have Eduard sets for all of the throttle levers and whatever and mixture controls and all of these panels will be done in probably in, like in that 3d look things i'm sure a uh, load of bombs american bombs with the tail fins here um, they're going to be fun to put together uh, i really don't get on with doing bombs very well to be honest with you uh, i uh, just too much there are a lot of faff sometimes and maybe we should just get some resin runs and have done with it um yeah the 
rest of the stuff here is let's get some pieces of the interior this is frame f the inside of the nose section as i say because the nose section cuts off they're obviously going to do different nose sections for different models of b24 they'd be daft not to of course this is the extra piece of um, armor plate that was uh, applied as a field modification it's quite nice um, a lot's going to hinge on how well this joint makes with the fuselage because that joint then also determines how well the um, canopy joint is going to make and that, that's going to have a huge impact on the, the appeal of the kit. I think that's why they've got these indents here. These are going to be for alignment pegs so that helps sort of make sure it's completely pushing and held in whilst glue sets and stuff. But even so, that's that's quite a, a thing. That's quite a way of doing it. Oh, it has worked on other kits. Um, and I guess it's just going to be very careful modelling to make sure that that works, as long as the mouldings are accurate enough. So we'll be seeing about that. Now, the one part that does interest me, puzzle me slightly, is this. This is obviously some some sort of gun position, defensive gun position. But you can see the whole thing, gun, side and window, have all been moulded as one piece. I've not seen that on an FX kit before, that moulding of a gun into a, a clear part like that. So I wonder why and how that came about. I'll have to ask. It's the it's for canopy. And you can see the what well, I do like what they do nowadays, and a few people do this now, is the parts that are obviously going to be painted because they're not clear on the kit. If they're large enough, they actually put some texture in them. They don't polish that bit of the tool, whereas the bits that are actually you look through are polished. They're absolutely clear, whereas these have got a very slight dullness to it, which will, is a good key for the um, primer to stick to and paint to stick to. It even goes around the side of the frame here, which is really a nice touch, I think. So here's the decal sheet for the kit. Um, at top here we have the decals that are common to both schemes. Here we have decals specifically for the bombs, if you want to use them. And then the decals for the 453rd Bomb Group aircraft, Corky. And the Burgundy Bombs, which of course is the uh, box art kit, the lead. And scheme B, the 485th Bomb Group Valiant Lady, the one that was flown in the Italian campaign. Um, as usual, I mean, you look at them, you think, yeah, the colours are great, the colours are fantastic. Um, the yellows are rich. This red is suitably sort of dark, dulled down. Um, and it's almost like an RAF kind of red. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's what it was on the plane. This orange is much more vibrant and shiny. Um, and all the registration looks really good, but as usual, We'll have a really close look at all of these to see how we get on. So there we have the instrument panel. This is our standard half millimeter pencil lead here. You can see these red lines and yellow lines here are very, very, very thin indeed. Really nice. Um, you can read the white text on red here. Um, that's a half mil high band, or maybe 0.4, and you can read fuel filter on there very clearly. That's good printing. That's nice printing. If we look at the uh, bit further on here, we've got the uh, blade manufacturer labels, and they are all in perfect registration. One thing I do like about Cartograph is, well, two, actually, no, two things I like about Cartograph, I'm beginning to sound like a Monty Python sketch now. Two things I like about Cartograph are the color accuracy, because everything is done with screen print. Um, spot color screen prints. There's no CMYK like dot printing anywhere, and that gives you beautifully rich color. And the second thing is the registrations are absolutely pinpoint accurate. Look at the registration there orange against the yellow, absolutely spot on, absolutely spot on, really nice. And that helps add sort of sharpness and detail to your work. 
it, it looks better because the decals are sharp. It's weird, but it's true, I'm afraid. There we go. Uh, Crew Chief Joe Meany, fire extinguishers, and some serial numbers. I mean, those, those numbers on this, that serial, I mean, not even half a millimetre tall, and look at them, you can read them. Absolutely astonishing. Beautiful decals, as always. And then, of course, we have the instruction leaflet. Very, very normal airfix stuff here. Uh, title, 172nd scale, consolidon, dated B24H Liberator. Some information about the aircraft in English, French, uh, German. It's going to be Spanish and Swedish on the inside here. And, of course, some basic statistics of the aircraft. There's some simple instructions here um, in many languages. And of course, the icon translations again in many languages, about 12, 12 or so languages. And then the instructions. I was first thinking this is quite a, a relatively flimsy sheet for a Series 9 um, difficulty 3 aircraft. But then when you open up, you see they've actually, I think they've made these panels smaller in general. Um, so each panel is a little bit smaller, but they're still very readable, still very you know, straightforward to look at. Um, there's occasional bits of colour to say things that like highlight where things like the um, whatever this is 26 or probably olive drab or something like that. 226 is um, American interior green, so it's probably like an olive drab for the leather work there. Um, bits in green are things that you cut off. Uh, again, these are multiple use parts, so um, a future kit may well use this part. This one doesn't. Um, a few drill holes. Here's the fun thing. A lot of people are talking about how tail heavy this is. They're suggesting a total of 55 grams here. Um, how you're going to actually put these amounts of weight in these positions, I don't know. This one looks like you can fill that with liquid gravity, um, which are like really, really small uh, tungsten. Uh, tungsten or titanium, can't remember which. I think tungsten maybe. Really, it's heavier than steel anyway. So that can go in there. I think it's even heavier than lead from memory. Um, 20, I don't know how I'm going to fit 25 grams there in front of the instrument panel, which is empty because you've got the rudder bars there. So if you can see through that and see those, then you're going to see whatever you put there for weight. 55 grams is a lot of weight. Um, so if you can figure out a way of doing it, that's brilliant. If you can't, then you can use the crew ladder as a support for the tail. Um, a lot of people say, oh, you can't do that, it's cheating. But apparently a lot of liberators, actually, they did use various supports of the tail when it was completely unloaded. So anyway, especially for changing engines and stuff where you lose that weight forward of the uh, center of mass. Anyway, we'll come to that when we actually build it. Uh, apart from that, the instructions are all very, very straightforward looking. Um, something interesting here, it says that camouflaged aircraft such as this had their internal skins painted in zinc chromate. I'm going to guess that's the green zinc chromate, not the yellow zinc chromate. So green zinc chromate, that will do. But the internal framework was left unpainted aluminium. So technically, this framework at the back here should all be um, aluminium. Whether or not I do that or not, I don't know. I probably, I'll probably do the main main structural beams in. The main part of the structure I'll do in maybe in aluminium. I'm not sure about the rest. Uh, that could be a bit of a tricky one. We'll see. See when we get to it. Um, anyway, lots and lots and lots of interior detail. The good thing here is, that, of course, if you've got the gun positions open, they're actually completely open to the air, so you can see straight through. It's not one big window. It's an open door, essentially, an open hatchway. So you do see a lot of this detail if you want it. And there's the uh, fateful step of joining the... the front fuselage and the main fuselage together. Um, that's going to require good luck. But it's also, it's going to require having made both parts of these really, really accurately. So they just slot together. We'll see how that goes. Can you tell I'm not all that um, optimistic about my abilities in this? Anyway, so here we have just the one type of um, fin being used so the fins that were included 
on the frames that we've seen already are obviously for earlier versions. I'm guessing earlier versions because these have got the full length um, trim tabs. So I'm guessing the earlier ones had smaller trim tabs and they extended them later on in service. Then there's the structural parts here. One thing I don't get, or I really don't get, actually I'm going to zoom into it because I really don't get it. I want you to better see it clearly. There we go. When you're assembling the wings here, make sure that's good and that's bad. Okay, I can understand that that's good because that's like flat and that curves and it shouldn't curve. But I don't understand what these dotted lines are. And there's two here. It's a tiny little Roman two because it's crossed out there. It's not two. Two watts. I just make sure that make sure that's flat and that's wrong. And also, if that's supposed to be flat, is there not a way of maybe have put a bit of structure in here, a, a beam or a spar or something in the top half, maybe which is more curved, maybe there's a bit more room. We'll have a look at that later. This part, out, out, so outer part here, is there not a way maybe you could have put a strengthening rib in there if that's so crucial? So that's the point. We've got to make sure that this top surface is flat so when you make it i guess what you do is you um put two together take and then put the upper wing on the, and then put something on it to keep it flat while it all sets i'm guessing that's what you do um again if if that were the that was something you should look out for then maybe these connection points should have been more robust i don't know I don't know if there's a possible reason why they're not like. Maybe you should talk to Chris about all these different things, the designer. Maybe I'll try that. Anyway, um, engine parts. So the engines are not massively detailed, but then, you know, you can't see most of it. So why would you bother? If you want to do that, of course, you're going to get aftermarket parts, aren't they? Um, all the uh, ball turrets there are all very interesting. So let me see that one that. The weird one yes yeah, the rear turret they see, you see the rear turret the part's gone there and then you've got another part that clamps around it so when you're going to paint these when you can make these i guess you, you you can do the interior then mask off the clear part spray these bits and do the guns and then put the spray those separately then put those on separately and then you've got more clear parts you need to have done and put on that's quite a complex thing to do um w without yeah um I would, again that's going to be something weird to deal with when we come to it because of how it's put together i would have thought it would be better to have those as separate parts and just sort of click it on anyway i don't know i'll ask i'll ask about that uh ball turret of course can be raised or lowered depending on what part of the machine for, for, for flight takeoff and landing of course the turret would be raised um yeah and there we go all the different bits and pieces here um two different canopies because two different aircraft got slightly different canopies there's a, an extra split in this canopy here for example it's one of the things there and there's also an extra a different design to this part here this is wider that's smaller yeah, other than that, everything's very straightforward. And there you can see you've got there's the, the crew ladder that can sit there if you've got the back open and you're on the, the aircraft on the ground. Then um, you can use that to help steady it. So you don't, if you can't get 55 grams of weight up at the front end, you can do that. So that's the instructions and some of the slightly interesting design issues of the kit. And then finally, we have the two scheme sheets here in full color, glossy paper, really nice. Upper part, matte olive drab, lower part, matte US compass gray, which is on well, there the things, it's actually neutral gray, ANA 43 neutral gray for the top. Um, yeah, and so very straightforward. There's not that many um, stencils to put on, which is a delight because, you know, <laughs> Some later aircraft had a lot of stencils for no readily apparent reason. This is probably the kit, I, the uh, finish I'll do, the, the box one. I like the look of it a bit better, to be honest with you. Um, 
It's uh, 4252234 Corky Burgundy Bombers of the 733rd Bomb Squadron, part of the UH's 8th Air Force. Um, yeah, that all looks very good. Lots of nice little details. You know, the American forces at the time like painting all sorts of stuff on them. So it really sort of brings up the, the kit, really. And on the back is the B scheme of 4252699 Valiant Lady of the 831st Bomb Squadron in the 15th Air Force in Italy. Again, similar sort of thing. Interesting that the, the tail parts are done as all as decals, whereas this part on here you paint yourself. Um, it might have been interesting to just to say, well, paint that bit and then we'll decal in the others. But getting the, the colours absolutely matched might have been more of an issue, I guess, with that. A bit, maybe a little bit less painting on here, but a little bit less artwork on here. But still a very elegant looking aeroplane, a very beautiful looking aeroplane. Um, yeah, there we go. So I think that's the scheme I will do. There it is then. Um, first thoughts are, I can see some issues arising, potentially issues that need to be really carefully planned for. I mean, the joint between the main fuselage and the nose area, that could be okay or it could be a nightmare um the setting of the wings i need to find out what that's all about um and that gun turret that's partly molded in clear plastic um i need to figure out how i'm going to approach that and how i'm going to get around all of that but hey now these are challenges that make modeling so much more fun don't they if you've enjoyed the show and i hope you have please do remember give it the old Imperial thumbs up on the like button below there because every like counts. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, you'll be notified of all my future content, including the build video of this aircraft. Thank you so very much for watching. Hope to see you again on the channel soon. Take good care now and goodbye.